Holy Ghost. John chapter 5. Glory to God. This man laid there 38 long years at the pool of Bethesda. And when Jesus walked up and said to him in verse 6, Will you be made whole? The man said, Well, I ain't got no man that will help me down into the pool. I've been here like this for 38 long years waiting for my chance and nobody ever helped me. Man can't help me. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. Man can't help you. The doctor's done all they know to do. Man can't help you. Man ain't got the answer. The surgeon's scalpel. You've done tried it so many times and it didn't do it. Come on, somebody. The medicine ain't worked. The stuff ain't worked. Man can't help you. Amen. Time, amen, has caused, amen, your problem not to get better. Time ain't healed you. Matter of fact, time has said nothing to you, but it's getting worse. It's getting worse. The woman with the issue of blood in Luke 8. She rather grew worse. Amen. Time only provided for her that things were getting worse. That things were getting really, really worse. But Jesus steps up on the scene and says to this man in John 5, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Somebody shout, over time he had not improved. And a lot of times we're so busy over time studying our improvement to trying to determine whether or not we're getting any better. But a lot of times all we can see is that we're growing worse. And a lot of times that heals God's power for manifesting because we're so busy trying to figure it all out and we're trying to study our body, trying to study what the doctor says and we don't see ourselves improving. So we think, well, maybe it ain't God's will or, or maybe time's running out. It ain't got anything to do with time. You can be worse right now than you've ever been. But in just a moment, the master can walk up and say it is done. It is finished. And if you get this rhema in your spirit, you will understand. Hallelujah. The time don't heal. Jesus does. Amen. So who cares whether or not you're improving or not? Some of us study whether or not we're improving. And by that we judge whether or not God's going to do something. No, get that out of your spirit. God ain't going to do something. He's already did something. Somebody shout, God ain't going to do it. He's already did it. John 19 and 30 said it's finished. Somebody shout, it's over with. It's completed. Colossians 2 verses 10, the Bible said in Him ye are complete. Say that with me. In Him, I am complete. So God ain't on His way. We think God's somewhere in His truck about to close the door and crank up and He's on His way. Hello? Somebody shout, God ain't on His way. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, He's already came. His ways already been fulfilled. It was fulfilled in Calvary. It's already did. It's already over with. Somebody shout, it's finished. It's completed. Hallelujah. It's already come to pass. I was in 59 and 19 said, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. Many quote and hear that scripture preached, and immediately they say or think, Yeah, when that enemy comes in, Jesus is going to lift up a standard by his Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 amen. We shout and turn the Holy Ghost cartwheels. Come on, somebody. Friend, that scripture ain't something that's going to be fulfilled. That scripture has already been fulfilled. The Bible said in Psalm 7 2 and 4, Amen. He brought me into his banquet house and his banner. Somebody say his banner over me is love. Psalm 60 verses 4, God has given a banner to them that fear him that it might be displayed because of the truth. Someone say a blood-stained banner. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isaiah 18 and verses 10, God said he would give an ensign and out of the root of Jesse, this ensign or this sign or this banner or this standard, amen, glory to God would come forth and his rest would be glorious. Isaiah the prophet said in Isaiah 7 and 14, the Lord himself shall give a sign. Someone say a banner. 
a standard. That's what sign, banner, and standard. They all mean the same thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God, and he'll be born of a virgin, and they'll call his name Emmanuel. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. So when Isaiah said in Isaiah 59 and 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Let me tell you, that is past tense. The Spirit of God has already lifted the standard. If that standard, that sign, that banner was none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, he was lifted up on a Roman rugged cruel cross on a pole. Hallelujah. They buried him. And three days later, Holy Ghost, and come on, Romans 8 verses 11, quickened his mortal flesh and raised him from the dead. Somebody shout, the standard is not going to be raised. The standard has already been raised. I need to get you to start looking past it, to look back to the cross. Look back. Somebody say look back. Right. When it comes to our healing, we're so busy looking forward. Boy, I look forward to the day when God heals me. And Jesus says, looking forward. That may be why you can't receive. Because you're so busy looking forward to when I'm going to do it. Look back. I've already did it. Come on. Have I missed your mind, didn't you? See, i got to get you to lose your mind. Right, right. My Lord. Hallelujah. God get that stuff right there out of the way. Come on, church. Hallelujah. And get you to trust in Him and see this revelation. Somebody say it's finished. Psalms 39, verses 7, David said, Now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in you. David got the revelation. He said, Lord, now. Somebody say that with me. Lord, now. Lord of God. He ain't the great I want to be. He's still the great I am. Come on, church. He said, Lord, now. Somebody needs to get that revelation in your spirit. Oh, let me all get to heaven. What day of rejoicing that'll be. When we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout victory. You can wait till you get to heaven if you want to. But I'm going to shout and have victory right here. Amen. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the Bible said in verse 7, or the uh, first Timothy 4, 7, I believe it is, the Bible teaches us that there's promises not only in the life to come, but also in the life that's found. Yes, that's right. Thank God for the sweet by and by in heaven, but somebody shout, they still promises for the master now. Oh, when I get to heaven, that's how I'm going to get my healing. Ain't it amazing how the Christian community has excused the power of God? We've tried to make up excuses. And that's one of them. Well, God just used that sickness to call our brother or sister home. No, he didn't. God ain't never used sickness to call anybody to heaven. Oh, I was messing you up. That's how we've excused. Come on, church. Hallelujah. If God uses sickness and disease to call people on to heaven, hello, then sickness has got to be some type of gift. If God uses it. If cancer is such a gift, why ain't we in the order asking for more of it? Who, who ever made up the rule that when you die, you got to die sick? Come on. Anybody breathe? Breathe. Breathe. If that offends you, you just have to straighten your halo up on your home. <coughs> Mary Hart feels good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Amen, Proverbs 17, 22. Amen, it's good that you're laughing. That's your medicine. If you can't laugh, look in the mirror when you leave. God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> hey, there it is. Praise God. Some of you thought, man, I don't even need a mirror. <laughs> I got enough of how I look in memory. <laughs> Praise God. Well, brother, I believe it's God's will. I stay sick and go home this way. Really? Who told you that? The Bible did. Brother, I just believe God don't want me healed. He wants me to stay sick. Really? Well, that must be a gift from God. Come ask for more of it. God, my back aches, and I'd love for it to ache some more. Will you please drink it? And you think, I'm out of my mind. That don't make a bit of sense. Come on, somebody. 
Well, God don't heal no more, brother. That was back then and for then. You go to the doctor? Sure do, every week. For what? You got so much money, you don't know what else to do with it? You make donations? Hello? Down in the local doctor's office. Come on. If it's God's will for you to stay sick and that's the way He's going to take you to heaven, come on somebody, and that's His will. Glory to God with them. Every hospital is a house of rebellion and every doctor is in opposition to the written word of God. But I don't believe that. Come on church. When He declared in 1 Peter 2, 24, who in Himself took our sins in His body, hallelujah, on the tree that we be in death of the sins and live in the righteousness by whose stripes we were healed, Somebody shout, if we were, but then we all. Our healing is past tense. But we see it as something that's coming in the future. And in doing so, it hinders us from receiving it in the now. Well, preacher, if I was healed then, why am I sick? That's why I'm here preaching. <laughs> Trying to help you to see that it ain't something on the way. God calls things that are not as though they were. Romans 4, 17. God walks up and looks at something messed up and he calls it fixed. And that's how it gets fixed. He calls it what it don't look like. Come on, church. In Luke 13, Jesus walks up to a woman in verses 12 and says, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. She was still just as bent and bowed over low like a dog on all fours. But he called her something that he knew was his will for her to be. Hello? After he called her that, she was still just as sick and afflicted and infirm as she was before he said that. But somewhere, her faith reached out and grabbed hold of what he said she was. Though she didn't feel like it, though she didn't look like it. Wow. And then in Luke 13, glory to God, amen, verse 13, Jesus stretched forth his hands. And immediately she was made straight. She didn't get straight when he touched her. She was straight because he said she was. But though he said you're loose or you're straight uh, and she was still being over, her faith reached out and says, I'm not going to live by what I see. We walk by faith and not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I'm not going to live off of what I feel and what it looks like. Hallelujah. And whether or not I'm improving or not. Time didn't heal her either. Jesus did. Time kept her in the same condition. But in just a moment of faith, when Jesus said, woman, you're loose, and her faith reached up and said, yes, that's who I am. Somebody shout, snap, crack a pop. You talking about popping and locking, son, she had it going on. Come on, son. Bones begin to snap. Bones begin to crack. Come on, church. She began to stretch out. Glory to God. There's a preceding word that comes from his written word. His written word's what I'm preaching, and if your faith will reach out to it, come on somebody, hallelujah, his preceding word, his rhema will come thereafter. It'll follow the written word and bring that to pass. In Matthew chapter 8, the Bible said great multitudes were following Jesus. They were thronging him. They weren't touching him. And here come a leopard. Uh, amen. And that day, that sickness was equivalent to our day in cancer. And amen. It was called incurable. Praise the Lord God. And he came to worship Jesus. And while he was worshiping Jesus in Matthew 8, verses 2, Jesus stopped and, uh, and uh, said, What would you have me to do? Uh, and then the man said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And in verses 4 of Matthew 8, Jesus stretched forth his hand, semicolon, and said, Be thou clean. Hello? The man worshiped. Notice when he approached Jesus, he didn't just run to Jesus and say, Oh, Jesus, heal me. He worshiped. So you had it right tonight. If we could just worship. And we're going to worship again. We're going to, I want, want y'all praise team to be ready because you're going to come back. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus in just a few moments. If you can just worship what happened, he weren't concentrating on his leprosy. He was concentrating on the Lord when he worshiped. He forgot about what he had need of. And when he forgot about what he had need of while he was worshiping Jesus, Jesus just uh, interrupted the worship and began to intervene and say, uh, what you want me to do? Well, you start loving on him, he'll just show up and say, what you need me to do? 
And the man said, Lord, if you will, I know you can make me clean. See, the man had a faith that was limited. He said, I know you can. But he was really unsure if God would. He, he, he really struggled with, is it your will? Lord, I know you can, but are you willing? We done quoted it earlier, but Jeremiah 30, verse 17 said, For I will restore health unto you and heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. Listen to what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 8, verses 4. He said, I will be thou clean. And immediately that man had his leprosy knocked out. His flesh was changed just like that. Time didn't heal him either. But Jesus did. Come on, somebody. He had to have been in the last stages of his leprosy because he was announced unclean. I mean, he, for him to come in the crowd of the people, they, he could have gone out. That could have been his death wish, so to speak, coming to pass. They'd have took him and killed him in leprosy. Wouldn't have killed him. The stones and rocks would have. Amen. Glory to God for him to even be walking among society like that in his day. Amen. But Jesus touched him. Oh, glory to God. Why? Because the man said, Lord, I know you can, but I'm not sure you will. Friend, miracles don't happen because you know he can. Just say, for example, if I was a millionaire, praise God, Lord, I received Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and, if, and if I was a millionaire and I walked in here tonight and I said, okay, about 10 people, I'm going to give $10,000 each in here. You know what? Not just 10 folk, but everybody in this room would go, what if that's me? What if it's you? Fish you, can I get along with you? The one you just asked, did you get along from? They said, get away from me and get along. <laughs> but it would start causing people to look at each other and wonder, am I one of them? Is he going to pick me? Well, but if a millionaire walked in here tonight and said, oh, I love you, I'm going to give you 10,000 each. My God, we'd have rubbed into a shout and some of you that didn't believe in dancing, you'd dance all over this place. <laughs> You'd be breakdancing, boy. You'd be cutting, <laughs> cutting the semen in the road. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you might even run the pew. Praise God. Why? Because your faith just leaped up. Because it was for everybody. Somewhere we've got this concept about healing that it's for some and not all. But in Matthew 4, 23, we find Jesus healing. And the Bible said he healed them all. Acts 10 and 38 said he healed all of those who were oppressed of them. Somebody say he healed all. Everywhere I look in scripture when Jesus would heal a folk, somebody shouted he was healing them all. He's no respect to persons, Romans 2 13. If he heals one, he'll heal them all. Jesus is not here to say, well, I'll choose about 10 in here. I'll give you your healing, the rest of you. You've got to suffer waiting to get that. What kind of faith does that produce? He has suffered through the sanctification of his body for us once and for all. Hebrews 10 verses 10. Somebody lift your hands and say it's his will. 